Let's take a look at Newton's second law in two dimensions and balance of forces in two dimensions. So we'll start out with an example. Let's say that we have an object and we know two of the forces acting on the object. We know that there's eight newtons to the left and five newtons downward. And the question is, how could we make the forces balanced in this situation? Well, if the forces are balanced, then the net force has to be zero, the object has to be in equilibrium, and in order for everything to balance here, I could add two forces to balance out the two forces I already have. I could add eight newtons to the right, because that will balance out the eight newtons to the left, and then I could add five newtons upward, and that would balance out the five newtons downward. So those two forces we could add, then it's balanced. Let's look at another example. Let's say that I have three forces in this situation. Let's say that there's 10 newtons upward, 6 newtons to the right, and 2 newtons downward. And then the question is going to be similar to last time. How could we add forces to bring this into equilibrium? To cause the forces to be balanced, to cause the net force to equal zero. Well, in this situation, well, let's, let's look at left-right, the horizontal forces first. Well, I have 6 newtons to the right. To balance that out, I could add 6 newtons to the left. Okay, and then up and down is a little trickier. I have 10 newtons up and 2 newtons down. Well, that's a total of 8 newtons upward. So to bring this into balance, I would have to add 8 newtons downward. And then everything is balanced vertically in the y direction, up and down. Okay, now Let's look at a next example. Um, let's say that I have 6 newtons to the left and 8 newtons downward. And I'm going to ask a different question here. Here I'm going to say, how could we bring this into equilibrium by adding only one force? And before we think about it in terms of numbers, let's think about it in terms of the general direction. So I have a force to the left and a force downward. So to bring this all into ba balance, I have to have one force that partially points to the right and partially points upward. So it should generally point somewhere up and to the right. Now the details of that, we have to do a little bit of math. Well, let's see. Whatever force I add, it has to supply 6 newtons to the right and 8 newtons upward in order for there to be balance. So I need some kind of force that's gonna provide six newtons to the right and eight newtons upward. Well, I'll try drawing that in. Let's see, a force that points six newtons to the right and eight newtons upward. So it part points this far to the right, this far upward. Well, if it points six newtons to the right and eight newtons upward, if we want those two forces, and we wanna combine them, we wanna add them, then the sum of those two would look like this, right? I just did a little vector addition. I drew my two vectors, my six newtons to the right and my eight newtons upward, head to tail, and then I drew the resultant vector right there. And if we do a little Pythagorean theorem, you would find that that's 10 newtons. And if you did a little tangent, you would find that that's 56.1 degrees right there. So in order to bring this into equilibrium, we have to add 10 newtons at an angle of 56.1 degrees as drawn right there. Now I'm going to ask a similar but slightly different question. Let's say I have three forces acting on an object, and I'll draw the force vectors right here. So we have a force to the left, force downward, and then a force at a 60 degree angle like shown. And that third force that's at a 60 degree angle is equal to 30 newtons. So my question is going to be, what are F1 and F2 in order to bring this into equilibrium? All right. This will lead us to the concept of components. A component, one way to define it, is it's how much a vector extends in a given direction. So let's take a look at that 30 Newton force that I drew. And let's think about how far it extends in the X, that is the horizontal, and the y, that is the vertical. And how far it extends in the horizontal and the vertical can be shown by drawing this triangle. And I'm going to name the two sides of the triangle 
F3X for the horizontal or X direction part and F3Y for the vertical or Y direction part. So F3X shows you how far F3 extends in the X direction. F3Y shows you how far F3 extends in the Y direction. If we look at this, F1, that force to the left, that has to balance out F3X. Another thing that we can call F3X is it's the X component of F3. So F1 and F3X have to balance. All that horizontal stuff, that X direction stuff has to balance. And then F2 has to be balanced by F3Y. All of the Y components, all of the Y parts, all the vertical stuff, they all have to be in balance. Okay, well, then the question becomes, well, what's F3X? What's F3Y? Well, fortunately, we have a right triangle here, and we have an angle. So we can use some trigonometry to figure out F3X and F3Y. We can get F3X because, well, let's see, that's an adjacent side to the angle. So adjacent side, and I know the hypotenuse of the triangle, so I can use cosine to figure out F3X. The cosine of 60 degrees, remember, cosine is adjacent over hypotenuse. So F, so excuse me, cosine of 60 degrees is equal to F3X divided by F3. And we do a little bit of math. F3X is equal to 15 newtons. All right, well, if F3X is equal to 15 newtons, F1 has to balance that out. F1 must be 15 newtons to the left. Now, F3Y, to get that, well, that's opposite the angle, and I know the hypotenuse, so I can use sine here. The sine of 60 degrees, sine is opposite over hypotenuse, so the sine of 60 degrees is F3Y over F3. And if we do a little bit of math, F3Y is equal to, what, uh, 26 newtons. And so F2 must be 26 newtons downward. So let's take a look at another example. Let's say I have an object and there's three forces acting on it. A tension force, a normal force, and a gravitational force, as shown. And notice that the tension force is at an angle, a 30 degree angle from the positive y axis. So I'm going to tell you that the tension force has a magnitude of 12 newtons. And I want to know what the normal force and the gravitational force are. And I'll tell you that the object is in equilibrium. The object is in equilibrium, so all of the forces have to balance. Another way to think about it is everything horizontal has to balance and everything vertical has to balance. So, let's see. For the tension force, we can find the y component and the x component. I'll draw a little triangle here that will allow us to do that. And the y component of the tension force is going to balance out the gravitational force. The x component of the tension force is going to balance out the normal force. So let's go ahead and find those components. Fty we can solve for. Fty is equal to 10.4 newtons. Ftx we can solve for. Ftx is equal to 6 newtons. So therefore, the normal force has to equal 6 newtons to the right. And the gravitational force, or the weight, has to equal 10.4 newtons downward. The key to these problems is that if it's in equilibrium, all of the x components balance and all of the y components balance. All right. Now, there are problems where not everything is in balance, where it's not in equilibrium. Of course there are. So if it's not in balance, if it's not in equilibrium, if the net force is not zero, then we can take Newton's second law and we can write it in two different ways. We can take that one equation and break it apart. It's also called bifurcating it. We can say the net force just in the x direction is equal to the mass times the acceleration in the x direction. And the net force in the y direction is equal to the mass times the y component of the acceleration. So for example, let's say that I have 40 newtons downward, 20 newtons to the right, I have a third force that I don't know, and the acceleration is equal to 2 meters per second squared to the left. 
and I'll tell you the mass is 5 kilograms, and we want to solve for F3. All right. Well, the key here is that if it's accelerating to the left, it has an acceleration in the x direction, but there's no acceleration in the y direction. There's no acceleration vertically. So F3 has to have a vertical component of 40 newtons. All right. And then for the x component, well, that's going to take a little bit of math. But don't worry. We can set up Newton's second law just in the x direction. We can solve for F3x. And once we know F3x and F3y, we can get F3 itself. We can get the magnitude of it using the Pythagorean theorem. And we can get the angle using tangent.